What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker Studio. In this episode of 10 Minute Tutorials, I'm gonna show you how to interact with the QuickSwap smart contracts using JavaScript. I'm currently thinking about how to do a longer series on how to build out your own trading application. In a nutshell, we would build out a user interface that's our own design on top of the QuickSwap smart contracts, which would be pretty cool. Um, maybe come up with some interesting ideas in there. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. I think we may do that one pretty soon. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this quick episode. So before we can actually write any code, the first thing that we're going to need is a way to interact with the Polygon mainnet. And the easiest way is with Alchemy. And I'm going to go ahead and sign up for a new account here. So we'll just do uh, Steven... Uh, tech maker demo is my last name and then we'll do Steven plus demo at techmaker.tv so I'm setting up a demo account here um, just so that you know essentially you guys can follow along and see my info without having to hide too much stuff on the screen and it's just a throwaway account um, so I'm gonna go confirm this email really fast um, and then we'll get back into it. So I just verified my email and I'm back on this screen. Um, now it's prompting me to p pick an ecosystem. So I'm gonna pick uh, the Ethereum ecosystem. I'm gonna just type demo here. The demo, then the app name will be demo. Um, and then what we're gonna do is select the Polygon mainnet down here. Now, Alchemy is one of, if not the only, I haven't looked at every single thing, but it's one of the only things, one of the only platforms out there that will let you access the Polygon mainnet for free. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna pick free forever and continue. You can skip this credit card info, and then we go with capped capacity because that's the only thing you can get when you're using free. Um, and then let's just type tutorial here and say let's go. Um, there's a link to Alchemy down in the description. Um, if you want to click that, it is an affiliate link, so uh, that helps us out. Um, but now um, that we're in here, we have access to two things. So we have this uh, Polygon mainnet HTTP and then the same thing WebSockets. We're going to make use of the HTTP. Just leave this screen open and we'll come back to it in just a minute. And by the way, the reason I mentioned this is a throwaway account is because I have this uh, polygonmainnet.com or whatever, alchemy.com slash, and then eventually you'll see the key in here. And this will be essentially my API key for this account. Uh, don't use that because if everybody who watches this uses it, it'll run out and it won't work. So you can just set up your free account and uh, I just kind of made this so that I wouldn't have to worry about like blurring this out in editing. So over in our uh, in our terminal, um, I'm just going to make a new directory and we'll call this uh, demo. Again, I guess I'm just going with easy naming in this uh, video. And we need to install two libraries. We need to install the QuickSwap SDK. So we'll just say npm install QuickSwap uh, SDK. And uh, this shouldn't take too long. And we need to install one other library called Ethers. Now, if you know much about the crypto space, you'll know that QuickSwap is a fork of Uniswap v2. And so this QuickSwap SDK is also the same as the Uniswap SDK. So if you're ever confused, QuickSwap doesn't really have a lot of documentation. It's pretty much the same, though, as the Uniswap uh, SDK. Um, so you can check if you ever have any issues in the Uniswap and it should pretty much be relevant. So with those two things installed, uh, let's clear the screen and then we'll say, um, node, and then I'm going to run the experimental, if I can spell REPL await. So this will allow us to use await in the, in the command line here. And what we want to do first is just const QS equals require and then quick swap SDK. And then I always like to kind of poke around and see what all is in here. Obviously, we're not going to read all of this, um, but we can look and see like we have um, QS.chainID, um, which you can see like uh, if you read the Uniswap docs, like I was saying, it's a bit different. It's not exactly the same, but we can actually pull back the Matic chain ID here, which is 137. We'll always just type 137 because it's easier for the most part. Um, so yeah, 
What we want to do is actually look at um, a couple of tokens and look at how we can get a price coming back from the actual contracts uh, for those tokens. Um, so we're going to kind of build up to it. Before we go too much further, though, we actually do need to go ahead and hook up our uh, provider. In this case, that is Alchemy. Um, and provider is sort of like the sort of standard terminology just for your uh blockchain connection essentially um, so what we want to do is just say alchemy equals and then we'll paste in this URL and again paste your own and then what we want to do and I actually forgot I need to say uh, const ethers equals require ethers in here and then we'll just say um, provider equals ethers dot providers dot uh, json rpc provider if i'm remembering that correctly and then we can just type in alchemy and i need to add new at the beginning that's actually a very good error message actually which is unusual um but anyway so uh we missed new so we, we go ahead and create a new provider and now what we can do is actually start talking to the contracts a little bit. The first logical thing to do is to actually go to QuickSwap and find a token that we want to look up some info about. And so I'm going to open up this charts in a new tab. And this takes a second to load sometimes. But this has all your stats about liquidity and so on on QuickSwap. If we click on pairs over here, um, I'm just going to pull up pairs for Abe and what you'll see why we're looking up pairs in a second um, but for now uh, there's an Ave tell pair and if you don't know anything about these tokens it really doesn't matter um, but what we need to do is search for the Ave address on polygon and normally that'll pop up on polygon scan which you can click on and it'll tell you uh, this is the Ave address and then we can copy the address here okay so what I want to do is say Ave address equals and then just paste that in and then we'll make use of that first to look up some token info in our QS object that we have there's another object called fetcher and you can see inside of here what's well, a function uh, with a couple of functions in it so we can either fetch token data or fetch pair data. And so what we want to do here is say qs.fetcher.fetch um, token data. And what we're going to do, first thing it takes is the network ID, which as I said, we can just hard code. If you wrote this out and you were testing it on different networks, you might actually uh, not use it hard coded because you could pull it from the actual uh, system and do it dynamically, but anyway, we're hard coding it. I'm gonna pass in the Ave address, and then we need to pass in our provider, okay? And so we run that, and actually we need to go ahead and await this and set it to a variable. So what we're gonna do is say Ave equals await, and then you can see that now we have Ave returning a token object, which tells us how many decimals it has, and then two things we already knew, which were the chain ID and the address. And let's do the same thing for tell. Okay, so let's, we can actually probably just search here. Um, so we can get tell coin on Polygon Scan and copy that address. And let's do the same deal. Um, tell address equals, paste that in. And then we can actually await the tell address, um, tell, and uh, sorry with all of my running back like that, we'll just say tell equals. And so now we have Ave and tell, and you can see that tell actually only has two decimals where Ave has 18 decimals. So that's interesting. Now what we want to do is actually get the pair info, and to do that, what we need to do is say uh, pair equals await, and we're gonna pull back the QS fetcher, and we're gonna use the other method, which is fetch pair data, and we can pass in Ave, Tell, and then our provider. I don't believe the order on the tokens really matters. And so now we have our pair info, 
But to actually get the price, we need to define a route. So which direction are we going? So which token are we trying to go to from the other? And what we can do is say route equals new QS.route and pass in the pair. And it's important to put that in an array because you can actually pass in multiple pairs if, if you have, I'll explain that one later, uh, but you can pass in multiple pairs. And let's start with tell. And so now we have a route. And once we have a route, I believe that the route gets us the price and all that stuff. Actually, probably querying the pair does initially. Um, but like if we look at this really quick, we can say mid price dot two significant and then give it like six uh, decimal points basically or six uh, precision. So whatever. Um, what we want to look at is basically we're saying that one tell is 0 0.00006 to so on and so forth Ave. So let's go check that really fast. So let's come over to the quick swap interface. Let's pull up tell. And let's say one tell to Ave. And so you can see here 0 0.00062398. Ours is a little different. And it's because actually when we pull this back, the price is changing all of the time. And it took us a couple seconds to actually type this out. Um, so if we were to sit here for very long, this would actually change again, most likely. Now, if we flip this and we put a one up here, we should see, okay, we have 16,000.5. Now again, um, let's uh, query our pair here. And the pair is the only thing we're awaiting. So I think that's where the price info probably comes back from. But now let's switch this to Ave, and then route mid price to significant. And we get 16056.2. I don't know why that's not the same, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like that should be the same. Maybe I'm getting out of date data on the screen potentially. Um, so anyway, we are getting back something that's approximately accurate. This mid price function is essentially supposed to return the market price, but I just kind of started looking at this uh, recently, so there may be more details to it. Um, and obviously, if we build out a real application, we'll dig way deeper into it. Um, but anyway, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. I just wanted to kind of walk through how you can start talking to these contracts, and it seems like everything is working for the most part, minus a few details here that we need to sort out. Um, but hopefully this was helpful, and uh, again, if you want to follow the longer series when we do that, uh, hopefully pretty soon, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.